Hello crafty friends, I'm Lynn from Studio Kato and I'm so happy you're joining me again today for another video. I am joining Seize the Stamp with their lovely, lovely color challenge. I really like color challenges. It gets you out of your rut of usual colors because we all have that same color palette we go to. Um, so this is a very, very happy spring color palette. Lots of greens, lots of yellows and oranges and some brown as well to tone it down a little bit. I am using some products from Pigment Craft Co. today, which are all available at Seize the Stamp. And um, I'm using Pinkfresh Studio inks. So I'm stamping this with a dark brown ink first from Pinkfresh Studio because it's a little bit darker than the pigment ink I am using now. This is the first fine vintage sepia, or just sepia actually. <laughs> and I did that because it allows me to add some embossing to it. So I'm using WOW Clear Gloss Super Fine Embossing Powder to emboss this wonderful stamped background. I'm just heat setting this with the WOW Jewel Speed Heat Tool. Uh, I'm using the second setting because that is what they recommend and it works wonders. The first setting is mostly for drying paint and things like that. It's not really for melting embossing powders. Now, the product package I am using today is actually called Delicate Floral Background. I use the stamp and the stencil. As far as I know, there are no coordinating dies for this because this is a background product. Now, the inks I am using, I am working on colored cardstock. Uh, this is a light beige cardstock. Um, not really my go-to, but I thought it fit the color palette really well. Uh, so I'm using the Marigold Yellow Ink by Pinkfresh Studio, which is the darkest yellow. Um, and I chose the darkest yellow because I am working on this colored cardstock. These are dye inks, so uh, the, colored of, the color of cardstock that is underneath the ink will definitely influence the uh, ink color in the end. Now, this is a very lightly colored paper, so it's not going to make that much of a difference, but you can definitely see it with the yellow and the greens that they appear a little bit different on this cardstock than they do on white. The oranges I'm using are Clementine and Persimmon, also by Pinkfresh Studio, and I'm just blending those on with some blending brushes through the various layers of this stencil pack. Now in this particular stem stencil layer, there are a couple of images. So there are the leaves, which I'm just blending on with uh, grassy knoll and olive ink. Um, and there are also the berries, which I masked off with scraps of purple tape. And I'm just going to do those in yellow as well. I didn't want to introduce red into this or anything uh, like that. So I just repeated a color from there, from the flowers I used before. Then there's one more layer, which are just vines or <laughs> branches. I am just doing those in green as well. They are very fine, so they will mostly appear brown because I stamped them in brown ink. For my sentiment, I am using some alphabet dies. I don't use those often because I really like layering things up. And layering uh, separate letters is always a little bit more work than layering a single sentiment. But I really like this font by Pinkfresh Studio and it makes for a really lovely bold sentiment. This is the Heather uppercase um, die set and I die cut each letter three times out of thick white cardstock and once from brown cardstock. I'm layering all of those together with the Barely Art Precision Craft glue. I am adding glue to all of the white die cuts and then just putting the brown one on top and stacking them once all of the glue has been added. It saves you a little bit of time. Now to arrange the sentiment, especially when I have um, separate alphabet dies instead of just a single sentiment, I like to arrange the letters on my grid mat, line them up nicely, and then add, them, add a piece of purple tape to them just to keep them in place and keep them nicely spaced the way I want them to be. To assemble this card, I just used a piece of that same brown cardstock I used for the sentiment. I die cut that with a stitched rectangle die by the ton, and I'm just covering my entire card base with that. I am then backing my background, which I also die cut with a die from My Favorite Things, so it also has a nice stitched detail all the way around, and I back that with a piece of cardboard to give it some nice sturdy dimension. 
I am gluing everything together with the Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. And once I'm happy with that, I can also put a piece of cardboard behind my subsentiment. So that also has some dimension. And then I am just adding glue to all of the alphabet dies at once. So I can just arrange that on my card right in the center. Once the letters are on there, make sure they are dry enough for, or the glue on them is dry enough so you can carefully peel away that purple tape. I don't have that kind of patience, so the Y shifted a little bit. I just have to um, shift that back a little bit, but that's all that happened. So it was still a lot more effective to glue them down this way than uh, just gluing them down separately and trying to arrange them directly on my card. So the full sentiment reads, you make me happy. Um, I used a sentiment from my favorite things and I die get that with one of the coordinating dies. So I will make sure to list those products in the description as well. The embellishments I added at the end there are from Crafty Meraki. They are the Meraki Sparkle Gems. I really love them, uh, especially this color. Uh, and they fit the color palette really well. Speaking of the color palette, again, this is part of the color challenge for March from Seize the Stamp and I hope you check it out because if you participate in the color challenge, you have a chance on winning a gift card. And Rachel from Seize the Stamp is actually donating the same amount that um, the gift card is to Ukraine Humanitarian Relief. So that is wonderful and I really appreciate her for doing that. I hope you play along. I will leave all the information in the description below and I can't wait to see what you make with this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.